You know, when you mention the term hot rod, the first thing that pops into most people's minds is a 30s era car like this. Because this is the sort of car that pretty much started the whole thing. And what it started was the idea of building a car that was faster and, and louder and cooler and pretty much different than anything else out there on the street. The problem is, the only way you could have a car like this was to build it yourself. And a lot of people don't think that they can do this. Well, the idea behind Gears is to show you that you can. So, a few years ago, we started a project called the Rat Roaster to prove this point. The Rat Roaster started out as some flat sheet metal that Brookville Roadsters stamped into some body panels and then assembled into a reproduction 32 Ford Roadster body and frame. From there, I laid out the direction of the project. Step back, take a look at this, man. This is awesome. We are sitting at about 580 horsepower and just under 500 foot-pounds of torque. What I'd love to have is a Billy Cox pick and a Jimi Hendrix pick. You've got it. That I can put on the dash, cover with clear coat, so they'll permanently be on here. Can you I get got it? it. I got a few at home. Can I get you to sign my dash and stuff? You sign your dash. <laughs> <laughs> Now at this point, the car was ready for paint and upholstery. So, got in touch with my old buddy, Doug LaRue, who had just started a new school called the Hot Rod Institute. He wanted us to check it out, so we did. The Hot Rod Institute is located in Rapid City, South Dakota, and what you see in the parking lot is just a small taste of what you're gonna find inside. It took me 30 plus years to get it over, to, yeah. get, to get to the point where I'm at where these guys can come and take you know, a year, year and a half, and they can have a good start on it. So not only does the Hot Rod Institute teach an incredibly high skill level and give the students a tremendous amount of hands-on experience, but they also have a professional rod shop right there on the campus. And they allow the graduating students to apprentice there and gain that valuable experience of working in a professional shop. And that is where the Rat Roaster comes in. Now the hood, oh, that's something you haven't seen yet. And it was a little tricky because I wanted a functional four piece style hood, but it had to be convertible. So I could run the car totally without a hood or with just a hood top or with the full hood like you see here. The problem is I've got side pipes, which I'm gonna keep, and I've got louvers that I wanna keep. So starting with a four piece stock hood, here's what they did. Zeus fasteners hold the top in place and allow easy access to the engine. The sides of the hood are bolted in place and they've been modified to fit nice and tight around the header. Now there's a lower panel underneath the header that slides into the hood side to give you that full hood look, but it still allows easy removal of the side panel. Now, instead of having traditional louvers on the hood, you remember that old 56 Buick I pulled out of a junkyard? Yeah. Well, we sliced the portholes out of the fenders, shipped them off to Doug where he tightened them up and grafted them into the hood top for a totally cool, totally unique look. Now, obviously the inserts still need to be re-chromed, but you get the idea. 
Okay, to go with the convertible idea of the hood, we got a couple of air cleaner systems from K&N. Now, you already saw the little ones that go on when I'm running a hood, but when I take the hood off, I got these big old velocity stacks, so we got some serious hot rod attitude here. Not only that, but I've got the look that I want in either situation, and I've got plenty of air sucking down into that supercharger. The front fenders were finished up and painted like the rest of the car, and they not only add to the cool late 60s vibe, but like the hood, they are completely removable if I ever want to run this car fenderless. The moon tank is something that I got from Honest Charlie Speed Shop, and I know you think that it's just going to be for looks, right? No, it's going to hold racing fuel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plumb it into my fuel line using an electric valve, so all I got to do is flip a switch, and I'm running on racing fuel. <laughs> you know, just in case I need it. <laughs> All right, the interior of a Roadster can pose some interesting challenges if you're trying to do something different. Now, most people will stick an original style bench seat in here, and that'll cover up all this open area behind the seats. But if you're not doing it that way, you got a lot of area here that you've got to do something about. Here is what we did. The guys fabricated some door panels and a matching rear panel out of metal to fill in that open area behind the seats. Everything was punched with holes to establish a cool look that matches the LaCara steering wheel, the I Did It steering column, and the microphone shifter. Of course, the panels were upholstered in the same diamond tough pattern as the bomber seats for a classic hot rod look. A small console was fabricated to hold junk like speeding tickets, and the e-brake handle is tucked below it, out of the way. The carpet, like the seat upholstery, was designed to snap in place for easy access to the floor panels and the master cylinders beneath them. The diamond tuck look continues back into a matching rumble seat because any hot rod has got to have a place to carry passengers. The metal work was completed by finishing off the bobbed fenders and then building a custom license plate box between the tail lights. Now the finishing touch is some custom lettering and pinstriping to remind everybody what this thing is that they're looking at. These clips are great, but to see full episodes, go to CountryRoadTV.com.